let's talk about it. But before we do, go ahead and like this video since we couldn't take the time to do that for the past dozen videos. At the bottom of the video, or if you're using the app, is a little thumb up icon. Go ahead and click that on a computer. It's right below the video on your desktop. And if you're using a TV, you simply scroll over with your remote, click options and hit thumb up. Go ahead and take the time to do that. It's not that difficult. Thanks. Also, this content is supported directly from you. I take the time to set up and organize this entire production out of my day and I enjoy giving you the realness. So I'm going to go through two quick articles today, both from fizz.org, both related. First, from fizz.org, quote, an emergency break for the climate, EU advisory board recommends a 90 to 95 percent reduction in emissions by 2040 what? to limit warming to 1.5. We just passed it. EU's Science Advisory Board on Climate Change recommends that Europe reduce its greenhouse emissions by 90 to 95 percent compared to 1990. The reason is clear. The crisis is here. We're experiencing possibly the warmest year in human history. We have. And even though there's broad political support for 1.5 to target the Paris Agreement, which we failed, in Norway, as in Europe. Politicians promised voters to take strong action to reduce emissions. Emissions of 350 billion tons is enough to raise CO2 to a point where we have a 50% chance. Well, we already reached it there, okay? It's not falling fast enough. The highlight of this video, though, is from fizz.org. The headline reads, Evolution might stop humans from solving climate change, researchers say. All right. Let's get into it. I'm going to read this thing pretty much directly through, so buckle up, hang on, let the whole video play for the algorithm. It means a lot. Central features of human evolution may stop our species from resolving global environmental problems like CC, a recent study led by the University of Maine. Humans have come to dominate the planet with tools and systems to exploit natural resources that were refined over thousands of years through the process of cultural adaptation to the environment. University of Maine evolutionary biologist Tim Waring wanted to know how this process of cultural adaptation to the environment might influence the goal of solving global environmental problems. What he found was counterintuitive. The project sought to understand three core questions how human evolution has operated in the context of environmental resources, how human evolution has contributed to the multiple global environmental crises, and how global environmental limits might change the outcomes of human evolution in the future, if there is supposed one. His outlines findings in a new paper published in the Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society B, Okay, first note here, human expan expansion. The study explored how human society's use of the environment changed over our evolutionary history. They investigated changes in the ecological niche of human populations, including factors such as natural resources, how they were used, what systems and methods emerged and to use those resources, and the environmental impacts that resulted from their usage. This effort revealed a set of common patterns over the last 100,000 years. Human groups have progressively used more types of resources with greater intensity, at greater scales, and with greater environmental impacts. Those groups often then spread to new environments with new resources. That doesn't sound like a virus or a petri dish of amoeba, then maybe you should reconsider. The global human expansion was facilitated, facilitated by the process of cultural adaptation to the environment. This leads the accumulation of adaptive cultural traits, social systems, and technology to help exploit and control environmental resources, such as agricultural practices, fishing methods, irrigation infrastructure, energy technology, and social systems for managing each of those. These. Human evolution is mostly driven by cultural change, which is faster than genetic evolution. That's the key point here. Human evolution is mostly driven by cultural change, which is faster than genetic evolution. 
That greater speed of adaptation has made it possible for humans to colonize all habitable land worldwide, says Waring, the associate professor. Moreover, this process accelerates because of a positive feedback process. As groups get larger, they accumulate adaptive cultural traits more rapidly, which provides more resources and enables faster growth. For the last 100,000 years, this has been a good news for our species as a whole, but this expansion has depended on large amounts of available resource and space. Today, humans have also run out of space. We have reached the physical limits of the biosphere and laid claim to most of the resources it has to offer. Our expansion is also catching up with us. Our cultural adaptations, particularly the, the industrial use of fossil fuels, has created dangerous global environmental problems that jeopardize our safety and access to future resources. Next bullet point, global limits. To see what these findings mean for solving global challenges like climate change, the researchers team, team looked at when and how sustainable human systems emerged in the past, and his colleagues found two patterns. First, sustainable systems tend to grow and spread only after groups have struggled or failed to maintain their resources in the first place. Remember that point. Sustainable systems tend to grow and spread only after groups have struggled or failed to maintain their resources in the first place. For example, when the U.S. regulated industrial sulfur and nitrogen dioxide, side emissions in 1990, but only after we had determined that they had caused acid rain and acidified many bodies in the Northeast. This delayed action presents a major problem today as we threaten other global limits. For climate change, humans need to solve the problems before we cause a crash. Second, researchers have also found evidence that strong systems of environmental protection tend to address problems within existing societies, not between them. For example, managing regional water systems requires regional cooperation, regional infrastructure, and technology, and these arise through regional cultural evolution. The presence of societies of the right scale is therefore a limiting factor. To recap, before we go on, it's important to note what he just said there. We only change resources and energy infrastructure, essentially. We don't change our energy until the first one has been depleted. Note that, okay? And they exist within societies, not between them. So we need to cooperate globally. Tackling the climate crisis effectively will prob probably require new worldwide regulatory economic and social systems, ones that generate greater cooperation and authority than existing systems like the Paris Agreement. To establish and operate these new systems, humans need a functional system for the planet which we don't have. One problem is that we don't have a coordinated global society which could implement these systems, says Waring. We only have sub-global groups, which probably won't suffice, but you can imagine cooperative treaties to address these shared challenges. So that's the easy problem. The other problem is what much worse. In a world filled with sub-global groups, cultural evolution among these groups will tend to solve the wrong problems, benefiting the interests of nations and corporations and de delaying action on shared priorities. Cultural evolution among groups would tend to exacerbate resource competition and could lead to direct conflict between groups and even a global human dieback. This means global challenges like climate change are much harder to solve than previously considered. It's not just that they are the hardest thing our species have ever done, they absolutely are. The bigger problem is that central features in human evolution are likely working against our ability to solve them. To solve global collective challenges, we have to swim upstream. Looking forward, his colleagues think that our analysis could help navigate the future of evolution on a limited Earth. It's the first paper to propose, their paper is the first to propose that human evolution may oppose the emergence of collective global problems and further research is needed to develop and test this theory. Do you hear that, Biden? Waring's team proposes several applied research efforts to better understand 
the drivers of cultural evolution and search for ways to reduce environmental competition given how evolution works. Research is needed to document the patterns and strength of human cultural evolution in the past and present. They could focus on past processes that led to human domination of the biosphere and on the ways cultural adaptation to the environment is occurring today. But if the general outline proves to be correct, and human evolu evolution tends to oppose collective solutions to global environmental problems, as the author suggests, then some very pressing questions need to be answered. This includes whether we can use this knowledge to improve global response to climate change. Quote, there is hope, of course, that humans may solve climate change. We have built cooperative governance before, although never like this, and a rush at a global scale. The growth of international environmental policy provides some hope, include Montreal Protocol to limit ozone depleting gases and global moratorium on commercial whaling. New efforts should include fostering more intentional, peaceful, and ethical systems of mutual self-limitation, -limit particularly through market regulations and enforceable treaties that bind human groups across the planet together more tightly into a functional unit right now. Our paper exam explains why and how building cooperative governance at a global scale is different and helps researchers and policymakers be more clear-headed about how to work together toward global solutions. It could lead to novel policy mechanisms to address the climate crisis. Modifying the process of adaptive change among corporations and nations may be a powerful way to address global environmental risks. As for whether humans can continue to survive on a limited planet, Waring says, we don't have any solutions for this idea of a long-term evolutionary trap as we barely understand the problem. If our conclusions are even close to being correct, we need to study this much more carefully, end quote, now, fast. Basically, get rid of capitalism because it isn't working. We are apparently the virus running rampantly out of control, breeding over 350,000 new babies every day consuming all resources on a finite planet with no plan at all to cooperate and reorganize our entire energy infrastructure as well as get rid of the previous energy we've been using in the form of fossil fuels. Does that sound like a train going 400 miles per hour off a cliff? Leave a comment. I want to hear your thoughts. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good week.